Hi, I have an emergency. There is a lady on the side of the road. She's chained up. She needs an ambulance. Do you know where you are? Are you chained up? And then I saw the small revolver. Take a deep breath, sweetie. Who chained you up? You know the person or were you kidnapped? I feel like sometimes it's easier with my eyes closed. Sure. Is that okay? This just released video, first obtained by 2020, was recorded by cops at her home in Redding, California in 2016 with her husband Keith by her side. Sherry asks cops for permission to close her eyes as she relates the tale of being chained and tortured for three weeks by abductors. It was now always hands on the wall. That very first shower that I had hurt really bad because the burn was fresh and the water was running over it and there was other open wounds and it just... This was 34-year-old mother of two, Sherry Papini who had gone missing earlier on the 2nd of November 2016 while out for a jog in her Reading neighborhood. A massive search was launched for her with community and family members including her husband, Keith Papini, pitching in to find this missing mom. The whole country was in uproar and it was as though nothing could move on until Sherry Papini was found and these two young kids would have their mom back just so some happiness can be restored to the home and to that community for that matter. So there was a genuine concern for the search and finding of Sherry Papini. Now at the time, the husband Keith Papini pleaded with the public for help in finding his wife and the mother of his kids. He went on to talk about how excruciating the pain was, going on also to talk about the fact that he doesn't like to think too much about it because he just assumes that he's going to get a phone call any second or that she's going to show up at his house any second. So that was him trying to be positive and hopeful that in the midst of all this chaos, concern and worry, some miracle could happen where he would just get a call and it would turn out to be his wife or he would just be sitting there and his wife would just walk in. It's good to be positive. Now, a reward was offered for information relating to the case and a GoFundMe account was set up by friends of Keith Papini, all in an effort to aid the family in search efforts and this ended up raising 50,000 US dollars. Fast forward, on the 4th of November 2016, Thanksgiving Day, after all the hustling and bustling since Sherry Papini went missing on the 2nd of November 2016, she just walked in and got found on a highway about 146 miles away from her community Redding with injuries covering her body, including a Bible verse branded on her shoulder. Now, this was a mystery, if not <laughs> more of a mystery, given the fact that she's actually been missing for about three weeks. So to find her in this state, it was just crazy. And that was what triggered the 911 call you heard at the beginning of this video. So, according to her husband at this point, he indicated that the bruises that his wife had when she was found were very intense and that she always had very long blonde hair. But in this case, when she was found in that instance, it had been chopped off by whoever where her kidnappers were. So, if you watch that interview, you can see that Sherry Papini's husband was genuinely distraught. You could see the guy was really being emotional. He was broken at the sight of the, his wife in that state when she was found. Although, on the other side of it, he was also happy she has actually been found and found alive for that matter. So, this guy was going through a lot. 
Now, recorded police interviews with Sherry Papini in the hours after her return showed that she was reluctant to speak with investigators, claiming that her abductors told her she was going to be trafficked to someone in law enforcement. So this story was far from over. The fact that they had found Sherry Papini didn't mean that the case was over because the police as per normal protocol and practice, would have to engage her, take a statement from her, interview her, have a discussion with her to get to the bottom of the issue. Typically, they would want to establish who kidnapped or abducted her, where she was taken, if she can give any clues, if she saw anything. They would have to take some DNA, do a lot of things. I'm no expert though, but these things are standard. Just so they can get a chance to unravel the case and possibly arrest the abductors because it's one thing the victim coming back but it's another thing the abductors still being out there because then it, it, it puts a dent on public safety and public peace and the police would want to take away that blemish by making sure the abductors are arrested. So Sherry Papini was in for a long ride with the police because she's the only one now who can speak to the case but then she was reluctant to speak to them claiming that her abductors had told her she was going to be trafficked to someone in law enforcement. She went on to say this, I quote, Two women, there was an older one and a younger one. They were Hispanic. They spoke Spanish a lot. And these were the people that she claimed had kidnapped her. Two women, one older and a younger Hispanic woman who, according to her, were speaking a lot of Spanish. Now, Given how she was going about it, officers had her husband sit in with her during one interview at which they sought to ask various questions to get to the bottom of the issue. Detectives later returned for a second interview after this one, but then Sherry Papini remained reluctant to open up to them. This was what she said, I quote, I don't know you guys. I don't know if you are in my corner. I know my husband. I know my husband's in my corner. <laughs> now, let's get into these statements that she made. Remember, she has already indicated that the two women who abducted her or kidnapped her were actually trafficking her to a law enforcement person. So, on that premise, it's understandable she wouldn't have much trust for anybody from law enforcement. More so, these detectives who have come to speak about her, speak to her about the same case where she is alleging that she was actually told by her abductors that she was going to be sent or trafficked to one of the colleagues of these detectives. So, in that circle, it makes sense why Sherry Papini would be reluctant to engage the detectives on this case. Because, obviously, like she said, she wouldn't know in whose corner they are. And if you are familiar with law enforcement, there is a perception out there that they look out for themselves. So at this point, Sherry Papini's concerned, concerns seemed very genuine. Now, she went on to claim that two Latina women abducted her at gunpoint and took her in an SUV to a location where she was kept chained up. The police had very little work or very little to work with aside from that vague description of the suspects that Sherry Papini gave them. So this case was not really moving that fast. Aside the fact that she's been gone for three weeks, she's been searched for and all, her return didn't really give the police much of an advantage in having a chance to break this case because she was already reluctant to engage them. And when she even did to an extent and gave a description of these so-called two women who had abducted her and taken her in an SUV. You know, the description of these suspects turned out to be a bit vague. It took investigators a full year to gather enough information from Sherry Papini about her abductors before they could release composite sketches of the suspects to the public. Imagine that. Usually, composite sketches don't take that long. 
but imagine when it has to take a year that should be a good measure of an idea about how difficult the police found it to get information from Sherry Papini after her return. We will begin to understand why as the story unfolds. Now, the story traveled on. The composite sketches of the suspects were released to the public. And Alan Ernesto Phillips, the co-founder of the Northern Hispanic Latino Coalition, indicated that the hunt for the suspects rattled the Redding Latino community. So, don't forget, Sherry Papini stays in Redding. In that same Redding community, there are Hispanic Latinos in there. So, if you come out with an assertion or with a claim that the people who abducted you were two women of Latino descent, obviously, then it puts the lenses on the Latino community and that is a very uncomfortable thing to be in. Latino women were fearful that they might look like one of those people in the sketch and from that point they could become a person of interest in that case until they are actually cleared as not being persons of interest. So these were desperate and trying times for Latinos in the community of Redding all because of the testimony that Sherry Papini had given. Now, former Shasta County Sheriff's de Deputy, Captain Pat Kropholer, came out to indicate that he had noticed several red flags in the story that Sherry Papini told about her abduction and abuse. This is when things began to go south. He went on to indicate that, for instance, she had different explanations as to why she was branded by her abductors. After her return, investigators collected Papini's clothing so it could be tested for any biological material. I told you, that was standard. Now, they were eventually able to determine that DNA belonging to a male was present on her clothing. But when that DNA was searched in the criminal database, no positive hits were returned. So they went on to search for her phone records and while searching her phone records, investigators were also able to determine that in the days prior to her abduction, Sherry Papini was in touch with several men. Mind you, Sherry Papini is a married woman with two kids, but it's turning out here that days before her abduction, Sherry Papini was actually in touch with several men. Police also began to question Papini's friends and an ex-husband who spoke about her tendency to lie and run away. So now the story was coming together, but this was a story that was going to contradict what Sherry Papini had given as her version of events leading to her alleged abduction or kidnapping. Now, her ex-husband went on to say that this is how she used to deal with things as a child. When things got hard, she would just run away. And the same thing was also told by one of her friends. So, a pattern was forming. They went on to even add in their testimony that there were some infidelity issues in her background that even Keith her husband had told them about. Investigators made little progress in the case up until 2020, when the help of genetic genealogy, that DNA was finally matched to James Reyes, an ex-boyfriend of Sherry Papini. But let's backtrack a little. This case started on the 2nd of November 2016, and the progress stalled stalled and stalled up until 2020 that's about four years and the breakthrough came with the help of genetic genealogy because the dna they had found and tested earlier in the criminal database didn't hit any match but by virtue of genetic genealogy that dna was finally matched to a man called james Rears who happens to be the ex-boyfriend of Sherry Papini, 
again, you begin to see her past with men coming up here again. Now, when the police questioned Reyes, he initially said that he had not spoken to Sherry Papini in years, but he eventually revealed that she had asked him for help. Detectives indicated that Sherry Papini, in asking for this so-called help from Reyes, had actually lied to Reyes, telling him she was being abused by her husband, Keith. Reyes went on to say, and I quote, that she was trying to get away from her husband. And he said this unaware that Sherry's allegations against her husband, Keith, were unfounded. Now, this is where I have a problem with some ladies like Sherry Papini and this victim approach that they are quick to aim for just to make themselves look like victims and enjoy some sympathy and empathy from people and make others look evil when in fact they are the narcissists who are actually toxic and suffering from some forms of toxic feminism and using that to destabilize key pillars in the community like family like the upbringing of kids. Here you find Sherry Papini engaging in issues with men from her past and you go lying to your ex that your husband is abusing you and you are trying to get away from him. When in fact your husband hasn't done any of these things that you are saying. So what was the motive in doing all this? Imagine that Reyes had taken the law into his own hands by tapping into the old flame that he shared with Papini and maybe confronted her husband or decided to take things to the extreme. That is how manipulative Sherry Papini was because she portrayed herself as a victim for what she told Reyes and it made it seem like she was a damsel in distress who needed saving when in actual fact she was the wolf in sheep clothing. Now, Rias went on to add that he didn't know anything about the two Hispanic women. So, he couldn't speak to the fact that two Hispanic women had actually held Sherry Papini at gunpoint. He revealed that Sherry Papini suggested he rent a car and then pick her up. They then traveled nine hours south to Costa Mesa, where she stayed at his apartment with him for weeks. Reyes also revealed that the bruises, cuts, and burns on her body were largely self-inflicted and that she also asked him to hurt her. Reyes recounted to investigators how Sherry Papini asked him to brand, to brand her. Sorry. And at this point, he said he was like, I could. Oh, this is probably going to hurt. I mean, I've never done this. So... That is how twisted Sherry Papini was. It was like she had a split personality. One side, she is the loving wife, loving mother of two kids. And she was the, the person that the, her community was so concerned about when she got missing. And when she was found, looking at the story she was peddling at the time, it seemed like she was the super mom, you know, hero of the community. She had everybody food, or most people food, except for the detectives who were onto her bullshit, for that matter. And for her to be able to sell this story upon her return, she went through the ordeal of injuring herself, inflicting wounds and injuries on herself. To what end? I don't know. I don't know. Why do you have to go through all this? Because... I just can't grasp how this gives her any advantage in any way or how this makes sense in any way. Why go through all this just to sell the story that you got kidnapped? It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, Ria said things changed on Thanksgiving when Sherry Papini told him that she missed her kids and wanted to go home. I think that maybe she may have had to be evaluated for 
some psychological issues or mental health issues honestly because the whole thing doesn't add up or i think she just needs to grow up i think that the tendencies that she was demonstrating as a kid that some of her friends and people from her past had talked about were playing out in her adult life this is someone who was about 34 years at the time of the incident that second november and she was heading into her 40s so how come she's behaving like a kid who just runs away for attention to go to the extent of injuring herself and all so it was her, 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 her affection for her kids and the fact that she was missing her kids which according to Rias, triggered her wanting to go back home now investigators being armed with james Rias' account of the supposed kidnapping they then called sherry papini and her husband in again for questioning but this was on the blind side of sherry papini she didn't even know that the investigators had had this in-depth discussion with her ex Reyes. so fast forward in august of 2020 the police questioned sherry papini again with her husband by her side and told her that they matched the dna to Reyes. they also told her that Reyes had shared everything he knew now sherry papini at first tried to deflect questions about Reyes' story maintaining that she didn't flirt with any other men and stuck to her story that it was two women who abducted her she said and i quote i don't understand there is no way this is james he loves me keith papini was shocked at the revelations and at one point he actually walked out of the room and for me it makes sense because he stood by his wife supporting her and even being that concerned genuinely for her when she went missing and even when she returned he was supportive of her so imagine how stupid he will feel and how used he will feel when these things start coming out that she wasn't even missing she just went to spend three weeks with her ex and she's testifying in front of him to detectives that her ex wouldn't betray her because he loves her so he walked out of the room at a point and he said i am the idiot husband who stayed around the whole time and it sums up what i said because you don't do that to someone who care about you i think sherry papini was ungrateful i think that she took good people for granted she took the support loyalty and love of her husband for granted and even that of her ex-boyfriend also for granted and she was just using them as tools for her pleasure and also to get whatever she wanted never holding herself accountable in any way now in march sherry papini was arrested and charged with making false statements and mail fraud prosecutors said that sherry papini's hoax kidnapping cost taxpayers more than three hundred thousand dollars in wasted resources including money she collected from the california victims compensation board and social security disability income the news sent shockwaves through reading residents who had supported papini and her family through the years said they felt betrayed yes and rightly so i talked about this you don't toy with people's emotions like that there are people amongst them in that community who may have even lost relatives to kidnappings and as such if news breaks that one of the residents in the community has been kidnapped they are drive to join the search and pursue the the cause of finding this missing person or abducted person is so strong because they have felt that pain before and they want to do everything they can to prevent someone else from going through that same ordeal so imagine the efforts they'll put in only to realize after several years that you played them and you are actually just hanging out with your ex-boyfriend it is so so annoying and i think that it's so unethical and so cold that sherry papini did this to the people who cared about her in her community 
Two local residents who had supported the Papinis were Terry and Marilyn Smith, whose daughter Terra has been missing since 1998. So it's just like I said, and they, they went on to say that it was a slap in the face. Exactly the point I made. You don't do this to people. Now, this indicated also that it just kind of makes a mockery out of anyone who is really lost a person. So this was how things had gone. Now, in her statement to the judge before sentencing, Sherry Papini said she was willing to accept responsibility for her actions. So, I think that this was when, for the first time in her life, probably, she, she realized that she can't escape responsibility, she can't escape accountability, she needs to embrace it so that she can learn something and move past it. I think the magnitude of the outcome of what she pulled woke her up to the fact that she had messed up big time on a national level and to an extent even on a global level because this story was all over the news big channels like cnn bbc covered all this and those of us who are not even in the united states but in other parts of the world also got to see some of these cases play out so she realized that just like that the things she didn't deal with in her childhood and teenage years has caused so much drama and shame for herself on a national level and not just for herself for her husband but even more importantly for her kids the two kids this is like a legacy issue if you google sherry papini it's there imagine these kids growing up and seeing this about their mom i hope they get some kind of counseling and guidance as they grow so this doesn't affect them adversely and as a mother i don't think she's fit to keep that role so she was arraigned before court and the sentencing was to happen. She said that she is willing to accept responsibility for her actions and I'm quoting what she said. I am not choosing to stay frozen like I was in 2016. I am choosing to commit to healing the parts of myself that were so very broken. Exactly my point. I think that she was lacking something. She was broken inside and this was her way of either escaping it or dealing with it but either way it's stupid i think that she needs support and i'm hoping that her going to prison isn't just that but other forms of support will be given to her to get her to be better her husband actually divorced her and took sole custody of the kids after this because the blue was just too much and i understand him i understand him now, the U.S. District Court judge ordered Sherry Papini to pay $309,000 in restitution and even questioned if she would be able to pay that money. He said, I would ask rhetorically, who is going to employ her in future? And for the judge to even ask this, I think is crucial because that is the truth of the matter. That is the truth of the matter. Who is actually going to employ her? For her to be capable to pull such an elaborate scheme, I think that it puts her brand in jeopardy and it puts this question mark around her where anybody attempting to deal with her will wonder what she will pull up next that they may not have the grounds or the stomach to handle. So... The case just went from a shocking abduction of a mother of two small children that had rocked a family and a northern California town called Redding and the entire country as a whole to a case where somebody had just kidnapped herself. It was a hoax. It was a hoax. It turned out that Sherry Papini herself had masterminded her own disappearance and inflicted numerous injuries on herself while staying with an ex-boyfriend who was also unaware of her scheme. So this is how it turns out. He, she was even playing this ex-boyfriend and trying to play him against her own husband. Who does that? I am just struggling to understand what the whole motive was or what fueled that plan. 
what was the end game? What was the end game? I think there are still questions that need to be answered here because although she was arrested, investigations were carried out and all, I still think that maybe something was not uncovered because why did she go through all this? Losing weight and it turns out that she didn't eat during her abduction and that's how come she lost weight and also it turns out that she was cleaning his house so she had some rashes and all but she was actually selling and peddling this story so if you look at her physically what she had, she had on her the things the rashes the bruises you would believe or you are likely to believe whatever she was saying and i think the police and detectives did an excellent job look if people like this, narcissistic people like this, try to sell something to you, it takes a very high level of objectivity, observation, non-bias and professionalism to be able to see through that bullshit. Because in the midst of the crying, the bruising, the, the bleeding, the sores, the rashes, it would have been quite easy for the police to also be fooled. And I tip my hats off them. My I tip my hats off to them for the fact that they stayed on this case from 2016 right through to 2022, where finally she was uncovered and prosecuted. I think that they showed the essence of true police work and they showed that they are able to pursue cases from beginning to the end in a professional manner and in an excellent manner for that part. I think they should have been commended much more than they were at the time because negative news sells fast like we've all heard, but I think that thorough work like this shouldn't go unpraised. So as it stands now, Sherry Papini has actually been sentenced to prison and is serving her time. She was sentenced to 18 months in prison and she's doing her time. Her husband has divorced her, taking sole custody of the kids. And it wasn't difficult because everything that Sherry Papini had orchestrated in this forced kidnapping was still going to be used against her in the custody hearing. So she was going to lose the case hands down. And with what she said about trying to heal her broken things inside i'm hoping that she's not just saying it for saying sake but she's actually pursuing it because look sometimes if you don't deal with your demons your demons will deal with you and i think that is what sherry papini got into what do you think about this whole episode about sherry papini there are other people who have done this like recently carly russell whose case i also have in my playlist i think i have about four videos of them this is becoming something that i just don't understand as to why people will do this and they'll turn up again but i guess in their own twisted mind it makes sense and maybe i don't get it because i'm not as intelligent as these people <laughs> let me give them the benefit of the doubt but hey leave your comments in the comment section what do you think for such acts and what do you think should have been the worst punishment that maybe could have been considered for Sherry Papini. Leave your comments in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. Turn on post notifications. Share our videos. We'll catch you next time. Until then, stay safe out there.